I think it's a good segue to this group of patients who, uh, who are probably the largest proportion we see, which are probably locally advanced. Uh, these are patients that are technically Barcelona B. These are patients who will have multifocal tumors, and, and I think one of the limitations of surgery in RFA is that the whole liver is affected by the virus, by cirrhosis, right? So you might burn one tumor or cut out one tumor, but then new tumors occur, sometimes over time or even all at once by the time the cancer is found. Jordi, what is your general approach to patients who have Barcelona B, intermediate disease with no vascular invasion. So just a uh, big tumor burden in the liver. Big tumor burden. The first option to consider is taste, chemobobization, because this is what has been proven to, to improve survival. But the, the, the selection has to be done according to the standard recommendations. The patients have to be uh, compensated, no symptoms, no vascular invasion. As soon as patients have even segmental vascular invasion, the outcome is going to be worse, the results not so good and the tolerance worse. So uh, the idea is to begin this treatment when the, the con these conditions are accomplished and when, when they are no longer there, because during follow-up, even if you get a good response, the liver may deteriorate or the symptoms may appear or the tumor spreads out or invades the vessels, then taste is no longer indicated. So the standard we do is to do first two sessions of chemobilization. And if the patients present partial response, necrosis and so on, then they, we do uh, taste at regular intervals every six months. Could I ask you that? Because, uh, you know, the practice often has been do a chemoembolization, get a scan. If everything is okay, then wait till they recur. In your opinion, because uh, you say two tastes, I mean, do you yeah. do two tastes right after? We, 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 we establish this at the beginning of the, let's say, the program of taste in, in, in my place. And what we learned and did is that when you do the first chemobilization, you may have collaterals that you do not detect at angiography. Now the equipment is far better and we are doing all sorts of imaging research. But you could have vessels that you would not have identified in the first angiography and they would supply the tumor. In the second, in the second session, you detect them and then you increase the, the response rate. You have more patients obtaining a more significant objective response. This was the basis for these two sessions at, at one set. The follow-up we decided to do it at regular intervals because if you have response, then you will need to, de to, to decide when to screen for progression, what is the magnitude of progression that you want to take into account to decide to do again a taste. Uh, so we decided to go for regular intervals and check for contraindications and keep the patient without relevant progression. And when this happens and there is no response or whatever, then the patients are shifted to, to, to systemic therapy. And we have always followed the, the concept that we should do what is beneficial for the patients, but not what is feasible to be done. There is lots of interest in, in, let's say, as was mentioned, to combine things to get better response, better necrosis, better whatever. But they say, well, is this, is this really beneficial? Or is it just a cosmetic improvement in the local efficacy, but the long term is not improved? And this is why trials have to be in place in the segment of patients between three, three and five centimeters in size to see the real value of the combination. But right now, we follow the recommendations. We do evaluations of new devices, new spheres, new whatever, and we will continue from there. So new technology, right? Uh, technology has improved outcomes in many areas of medicine. Uh, chemoembolization has been around for decades now. Uh, there's now radioembolization. There's been interest in different beads. Can, can, can Dr. Marshall, can you give us an idea of where things are today? Sure. Well, uh, I'm glad we're talking about this today. This is not something that would have received a whole lot of attention a few years ago, but we've seen great advances in the amount of research that's done uh, specifically in interventional radiology and with radioembolization. Uh, of note is the recently uh, revealed SARA trial. Um, this is the first reported randomized control trial uh, that compares Y90 in locally advanced hepatocellular carcinoma to serafinib. Can, can you give us an idea of what Y90 is? I mean, it's, it's not, I think, available at every center and the approach. Sure. Well, th th I'm glad you brought that up because most people talk about embolization, and embolization is a, a broad stroke. Uh, when we talk about chemoembolization, it's a totally different mechanism than radioembolization. 
in chemoembolization, we try to uh, deliver chemotherapy to a tumor, and we also try to induce ischemia or infarction by cutting off a blood supply. In radioembolization, the approach is different. We deliver very small particles that are radioactive into uh, the liver, and they follow the blood flow, which preferentially goes to tumors. This results in a microembolic effect, which does not cut off the blood supply to uh, normal liver parenchyma, and then delivers uh, radiation. This has resulted in different um, uh, complications and uh, different symptoms after the procedures, most notably in patients treated with Y90 or radioembolization, their symptoms tend to be much lower. Their quality of life scores tend to be much better. And so, um, but at the same time, this therapy might not be available everywhere, and so taste may be the only option for those patients. Um, but again, they're two mechanistically very different approaches.